Hi guys, this is Dr. Chloe Koskin from Mobility Doc. Today we're going to do week four of our core series for MD Does Yoga. So we have built a really good foundation of working on plank and side plank and chaturanga and now we're ready to kind of put all of it together um, and focus on crow. For the triplet, we're going to work on your flexibility in lizard stretch. Then we're going to challenge your strength in plank, knee to elbow. Then you're going to do crow weight shifts, which are going to be really helpful for teaching your brain exactly how to get into crow. After you do three rounds of the triplet, then you're going to practice crow. The lizard stretch is one of my favorite ways to improve the flexibility throughout the whole glute and, um, and inner thigh, and you might even get a little bit of a stretch on the opposite side, um, hip flexor and quad. So let's get started. So you're going to first start with making sure that you're in a neutral position in your spine. So you're going to try to keep this position. So you're not going to be like too tucked and you're not going to be over arched. So when I'm here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my left foot to the outside of my left hand. Now immediately I'm going to kind of check in with the position that my hips are in. I'm going to want to kind of like turn a little bit and I'll show you from another angle too. But as much as I can, I'm trying to keep this. Um, I'm trying to keep my pelvis even. You might even want to put your hands up on blocks if that's not really that possible. Then I'm going to walk um, this right knee back. And now this whole time I'm trying to keep this knee over this ankle, so I'm not pushing back. And then I'm going to lift this knee up. I'm going to push my left leg to the outside, so then that way I can get a little bit more of a stretch. Now from the front, that looks like this. So I'm here, my left foot is to the outside of my left hand and now I'm really trying to think about I'm like pushing this knee up to the side and I'm trying to drop this hip down a little bit because that is what's going to be really helpful for getting um, getting in like say a squat position or um, or anything that, that you need in terms of being able to be in like a deep hip flexion then you're gonna lift that knee up. As soon as you do that though, like this whole hip is going to wanna to kinda of hike up. As much as you can, you're gonna to try to drop this inner thigh down toward the ground. And you might also want blocks in order to be able to keep that a little more even. Plank knee to elbow is a great way to improve some of your core stability. And we're gonna make it a little bit more challenging because we're going to add in an element of some type of moving um, body part. So in this case, we're gonna be moving from the hip. Let's get started. So I'm gonna, um, the thing that I'm going to be focusing on most that I'm gonna show you first in this position is that when I bring my knee to my elbow, I'm making sure that that movement is just coming from my hip. So I'm not moving from my back as I do that. So I'm gonna get started in this plank position. My shoulders are over my wrist. The back of my neck is long. I'm pressing in through the ground. And now when I'm here, I'm going to bring my knee in toward my elbow and then come back. Knee in toward my elbow and then come back. Now this is what I see happen most frequently is you kind of start to move the spine. The thing that I'm prioritizing is just the movement coming just from my hip. So that might mean that you don't necessarily touch your knee to your elbow, that's fine. The thing though that we're focusing on is just moving from the hip and not compensating from the back. Crow weight shifts are helpful for teaching your brain exactly what it needs to do in order to be able to get into crow pose. So um, the way that it works is that your brain has to first be able to attain a position before it can maintain it. So this exercise will help to highlight the like exactly how you need to get into crow pose before you can start to focus on staying in that position. So let's get started. You're going to start by sitting in this kind of squat position. I'm going to show you first from the side and then I'll show you um, from the from the front as well. So you're going to be in the squat position. You need to make sure that your pelvis like isn't already kind of rounding. I want to make sure that I um, that I'm rotating my hips forward so that the tip of my sacrum is pointing back and then I need to try to get as deep as I can into hip flexion without rounding. So make sure that your hips are um, are good and warmed up. Now already I'm trying to bring my knees as high on around my shoulders as I can. Then I'm going to start to walk my hands back. 
I'm going to place them. And then you see how like as I'm coming up, and you might even need to play around with where your hands are, as I'm coming up on my toes, I have to start to shift myself forward. So if my hands are too far out in front of me, I'm not going to be able to shift forward, okay? But if they're too far back, now my knees aren't on my, on my shoulders. So I'm going to be here. And now what I'm doing as I'm shifting forward is I'm trying to squeeze my legs in toward my toward my arm as I start to lift up. So I'm gonna squeeze my legs in, and now I'm shifting forward onto my toes. Now, the thing that I need to be able to start to do is to get my pelvis to be up over where my, where my hands are, where my base of support is. So when I'm here, what I need to think about doing is as I'm here, I'm shifting forward. So you see how if I'm way back here and I try coming up, I'm not going to be able to. I really have to allow myself to come forward and it might be just here and then you come down. And then you can try lifting back up and then come down. Even just the littlest bit is going to start to teach your brain exactly how much it needs to shift forward in order to be able to get that weightlessness. For the triplet, we're going to work on your flexibility in lizard stretch. You're going to hold this for 30 seconds on each side. Then we're going to challenge your strength in plank knee to elbow. You're going to do 10 on each side. Then you're going to do crow weight shifts, which are going to be really helpful for teaching your brain exactly how to get into crow. You're going to do five of those. Crow pose is both fun and challenging, and it requires a good bit of core stability as well as um, shoulder and hip stability. But the thing though that I will say is that we need kind of a pretty even balance um, of all of those. So a lot of times people think of it as just an arm exercise, but you're gonna see pretty quickly that it's kind of all three of those things. I'm first gonna show you kind of the first step using a block. So then that way you can kind of give yourself a little bit more space. So you can really focus on some of the positioning. So I'm gonna place the block down and now my feet are gonna go on the block. So when I'm here, I'm just going to squat down as much as I can. So now I'm already getting a little bit more of a lift. So then that way I can be over my hands. Now when I'm here, I'm trying to create a little bit of an arch um, in my back. So then the tip of my sacrum, right where my fingertips are, that is coming up. And then as this is coming up, my sternum is coming forward by bringing my thoracic spine, my middle back into my back. Now, I'm trying to stay wide across my collarbone. So already when I place my hands down, I'm making sure that I'm not rounding too much. So I need to stay wide across my collarbones, place my hands down. I'm pushing, I'm kind of pushing out so then I can keep wide across my collarbones. And now what I'm thinking about doing is I need to squeeze my knees in toward each other as I keep that wideness across my collarbones as much as I can. And now I need to shift forward. So now my pelvis is over my hands. So my pelvis being over my hands creates that weight shift so then I can have that moment of like uh, weightlessness. Now I'm trying to bring my knees in toward each other as much as I can as I push my elbows kind of out to the side. And then I'm gonna to try to bring my collarbones forward. Okay, from the front without the block, same idea, but you're gonna have to kind of like play around with a little bit of that positioning. So you really wanna make sure that your hips um, can stay flexed enough. My hands are placed. Now, do you see how I'm trying to keep my collarbones wide across, okay? So I'm here and then I'm going to shift forward. So you see how I have to shift forward before I lift my feet up. If I try to lift my feet up, it's not gonna happen. I have to shift all the way forward and then my legs are just going to come up. For crow, I want you to try to hold for five breaths and do that three to five times. That's gonna be really helpful for building your strength in that position. Thanks for joining me for this four week series. I love yoga so much, so it's really important to me to be able to share my passion of yoga and the body with you guys. Please make sure to like, comment, and share on YouTube so more people know about this series.